this uh, th this this kind of concept, this um, this de kind of determination, especially within the Western world, that our mind is made up, and that desire to want to change our consciousness. Um, I mean, with intention. I don't mean for pain or or sickness, or but to yeah. you know intentionally want to, wanting to change your consciousness has been lost in sort of the modern Western world uh, a little bit, and not only lost, but it's also been vilified. Well, most of the changes of consciousness that our society approves of basically just makes you a better worker, you know? <laughs> right. we're, we're okay with uh, with uh, caffeine, which, right. you know, is a great drug. drug, drug. I'm, I'm completely addicted. Likewise. <laughs> um, and, 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 and do not fight that addiction. Um, uh, but you know, we take we're we're highly medicated as a culture, and most of the medications we take, uh, whether it's for ADD or depression, uh, allow us to function uh, essentially, uh, and and uh, you know focus, and get the job done. But there are these other chemicals that propose a more radical change in consciousness um, that are not compatible with work, <laughs> and. Um, I mean, they actually may, you know, encourage creativity in various ways. In the long term, they may contribute to work, but in the short term, they, you know, they take too long. They they leave people in such an altered state that they may not conform. Um, they're more challenging to the status quo. Uh, nevertheless, they they found their place in many societies, and they can actually contribute to the status quo, uh, depending on what that status quo is. Psychedelic communities are forming, continue to form, form every day. Groups of people who have psychedelic sacraments that they use to expand their own subjective consciousness so that they can more fully blend with the collective and through that blending create art that they can then secretly or not so secretly bring out onto the stage that the people who are in popular culture can ogle and marvel at and be astounded by and wonder what it was and what is that and what does that mean and who could have where who made that thing man and i'm looking to sort of bust the us and them paradigm yeah. because you know what we're seeing aside from and you did a great job of expressing sort of the multiverse in our current reality. Yeah. There are many different realities going on. Yeah. There's no question about it. But they are incredibly divisive. You know, how do we sort of, you know, just erode at that divisiveness a little bit? And, you know, the 60s had a really strong us and them construct to it. Yeah. I mean, that was part of it. Like, fuck the man, you know? Yeah. It's like us versus them, hippies versus squares. 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 Our parents versus the kids. Yeah. And it was very, very, you know, strongly divided. And to some extent, I get that. I think another beautiful aspect of this research is that it is a big time guilt reducer. Because if you've done your due diligence, if you've looked into the substance that you're taking and, and you, you will begin to realize like, oh, this, this is a, actually a, a really useful, potentially healing, tr transformative substance, and I really don't need to feel like I'm some kind of drug-addled junkie underneath a bridge shooting black tar heroin into his arm when I'm taking this substance because this substance is, who knows, it depends on what it may be, but you might, you'll quickly discover pretty much everything is a hell of a lot less toxic than alcohol. So, and, and, and sometimes less toxic than coffee certainly less toxic than cigarettes and so then you begin to realize like wait a fucking minute i've been hoodwinked haven't i because this substance that i'm taking i know at least based on all the research that's out there right now what's going to happen the cloud of state induced paranoia and self-judgment that yeah. we're all afflicted by thanks to the war on drugs can lift a little bit from your experience of the psychedelic, which right. makes it that much more potent as a tool for personal transformation and healing. Absolutely beautifully said. said.
This is like episode 26 of the MAPS podcast, and only about half of them, a little bit less than half of them, have been uh, originals. We're usually sourcing the archives of oh, cool. great previous lectures and psychedelic science kind of stuff and reframing it. But I was excited to do this one with you and being a cultural observer and a psychedelicist in your, in your own right. And I think you are a great uh, living example of the promise of psychedelics. Thank for you. Sure. Um, but, you know, I, I am very curious as to your take. There's no question, no matter what side you're on, we're living in a complicated world. That's correct. Crazy things are happening. Right? Yes. Don't have to dissect that. But, you know, being in the psychedelic frame of mind and taking note of what psychedelics has done for your consciousness and for yes. your own personal evolution, for your own place in the world, how does it affect your relationship with the outside world? How do you see... Our, our place in the world right now through the psychedelic lens um okay so uh well you know it's a process so i guess maybe it goes without saying but whatever i'm saying right now is just sort of part of this process that happens with psychedelics so psychedelics produce in me have produced in me a series of epiphanies and realizations that have been Transformative and destructive in the sense that they've annihilated the self that I thought I was. And All at the same time. Yes, yes. yes. Right. And I guess destruction is... Sheila. I guess destruction <laughs> and, and, and transformation are actually pretty much the same thing. But what I'm saying is... So this is kind of where I'm at right now. Um, <clears throat> where we think about the outside world or the, the reality that we're in. Mm-hmm. And I see it as a frame of experience that is extended for a pretty long time, 60 years, 80 years. We're in this frame for about 80 years where all around us is this stuff. Mm. And this stuff is appearing and then disintegrating. And we get very attached to this stuff. But I think what we're in right now fades out. And then we continue to experience the observing self. It's non-different than what Ramdas talks about. It's just through psychedelics, I feel like I have a uh, deeper grasp on the simultaneous Spontaneous impermanence of this reality and what appears to be a non-ending <laughs> sentience. So is that sort of like when you die, consciousness does not cease to exist? No way. Right. I don't think so at all. I don't think so either. And I think this is a frame that we're in. And I, it's like, my friend put it like, it's like a viewfinder, you know, when you're clicking the side. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what this is it's like a frame in the viewfinder that we're looking through and it's a wonderful frame but it's definitely a frame that is going to click out and that's really shocking to people and astounding because they get confused again i don't i know none of this is is new data it's like just subjectively it's become more clear to me through psychedelics well the importance of this data and why i asked the question has to do with integration because as i see it i mean it's it's not exactly this simple but to oversimplify it one of the problems with the 1960s and so many people turning on so quickly without any historical context you know there was no data do you think that kind of there could be a mass proliferation of psychedelics that would help us? Do you think it would help if more people consciously turned on? Yeah, 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 yeah. The psychosomatic effects of belief are truly incredible. And like, you'll see things that defy, you know, logical, empirical reasoning. The flip side is that there's a lot of things that we can do, and we're just too afraid to do it. It's just interesting what the different psychoactive compounds, you know, kind of allow, and, and which way you can kind of bend them, depending on the intention of whoever's providing it. 
Right, yeah, I think most people don't appreciate how versatile most of these compounds really are. It depends on, you know, what the, what the ends are, what you're trying to achieve. I mean, I had, I had a really interesting friendship with this PCP chemist in Compton um, who tragically died when his lab blew up. But before he died, um, we would talk a lot about chemistry. In some sense, he was a chemist in that that was his job. That was where his money came from his entire adult life. He'd synthesized PCP and it was his livelihood, but he had no concept of what a molecule was, uh, had never taken a chemistry class and didn't understand on a molecular level anything that he was doing. So he had this like folk chemistry understanding that wasn't, I could see why he said the things that he said, because based on his observation of these reactions, it made intuitive sense if you didn't understand wow. what's happening on an electronic molecular level. level. That's pretty wild. So he just knew that knew how to do it and then created his own legend surrounding it, which is pretty much what every indigenous culture has kind of had to do. You have these things that all of a sudden you mix them, you boil them, you do them, and you create what feels nothing short of magic, you know, when you're ingesting a lot of these compounds. How the fuck do you describe that, you know, if you don't have the microscopes and all the, you know, the analysis that we have built? And even with the analysis, when it comes to actually describing the qualitative effects, we're no better than anyone else. We have no real tools. We, maybe we have some surveys and things like that that can give a, an ed, a quantitative edge to the more mythological interpretations of the action of these substances. But for the most part, we're all doing the same thing. We're just describing what we experience. Yeah, totally. totally, totally. Fear, then your life will almost certainly improve. 